the most important thing that Nike is doing is listening. They just really listen. They really try to find, okay, what is it that really matters for Jilu or for breaking as it as it as its whole. And um because I think what works really well, and this is more about marketing strategies, is you want to put your brand into a good light. What's up guys? Welcome back to Stan Salements. I'm Chaz B, I am your host, and before we get into it all, I want to say a big thank you to Freestyle Session, who is bringing us today's show. You can check them out at freestylesession.com and use the code STANCEELEMENTS for 20% off your total order. That's right, we're giving you 20% off your order if you go to freestylesession.com and use the code STANCEELEMENTS at checkout. Just now I'm with the homie G. Lou, all the way from Germany. G. Lou, thank you very much for your time. It's awesome to have you here. Thank you for your time. So we can see straight off the bat, the Nike right here. You are signed as an athlete with them, which is <laughs> incredible news. Uh, can you tell us how that all started and what your relationship with Nike is like? Um, it all started with me working with a lot of other brands and I wasn't really happy with the way they worked with me. Um, they, I felt like they were using my platform, but not really giving me anything back for that. And I am not really, <laughs> I don't think uh, clothing and apparel is enough for the platform that we as breakers can offer. Um, so yeah, I was really unhappy with the collaborations that I had before. And, and a friend of mine, um, she recommended me as a breaker because Nike was asking her like, hey, do you know any breakers? Um, in Berlin and she was recommending me and they just had a lot of questions so they wanted to meet for coffee they wanted to ask uh, how our competitions how is everything going down um, so I felt like genuine interest in breaking as a culture as well but as a, at the same time I was just tired of uh, having my platform and my knowledge uh, being used without being um, honored and without being pretty much without being paid for it. So I gave them a little bit of information, but I tried not to give them too much information so that they would still need me as a, as a source of information. Um, and I told them, look, I'm not really interested in a short-term uh, partnership or just projects. I want a long-term partnership and that's what I'm looking for. And if that's not what you're looking for, then I don't think we should continue this conversation. Um, it just actually, it just took a few weeks and uh, we were starting to look deeper into projects and uh, then I got signed for the same year for three months on a trial um, as an athlete for a collaboration that we did. I really, really liked the video for Snipes um, where I actually had the chance to really put my visions, my ideas, my... Um, yeah, my, my art into it. And uh, since I liked it, I liked the collaboration with Nike and they liked it with me. So then we started working together since May and that's, that's um, yeah, since then I'm the first breaking athlete signed by Nike. That is incredible. And you were talking about the meetings that you would have with them and you're keeping a few things sort of closed off so that they would always come back to you for more info. What do you think big corporations like Nike look for uh, from us is it just that we have a social media following are they looking for activity at events is it a certain way that you move what would you say about that i think every corporation works a little different what i really like about nike is that they really look at it as a whole they look at it as a culture they look at it as me as a person which purpose do i have what presence do i have in the scene um what role am i playing um that that's a really specific thing about Nike that I really like is they don't look for okay where can we put my product where can we promote this product which product are we launching so uh how can we advertise this and that it's really more about the message that you're sending so that's why um I have a lot of meetings where we talk about the future how what we want to um go for and it's really Sometimes I can really say like, hey, the message that I want to send is this and this. And they are like, okay, let's try to do this. They really try to amplify my voice 
and I'm doing the best I can to act responsibly, uh, responsibly um, and find the best for the future of breaking, in a sense. Wow. And it does beg the question of how are they helping you? Like, I understand there's some things that you might not really be able to uh, talk about, but when you're talking about a corporation like Nike, and earlier on you were saying that you didn't appreciate that there were brands that were coming to you and they were taking advantage of you. So how are Nike helping you? And when you talk about the bigger vision that you have, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? I think the most important thing that Nike is doing is listening. They just really listen. They really try to find, okay, what is it that really matters for Jilu or for breaking as it, as it, as its whole. And um, because I think what works really well, and this is more about marketing strategies is you want to put your brand into a good light. And there's two ways of doing that. You can look for, okay, how can we make our brand look good? Or the other question is, how can we actually do good things and be a good brand in order to help, in the, our case, breaking hip hop and uh, B girls and B boys? So I think, to be like really honest, I really feel like that they are not trying to just have the picture of the good brand, but actually are trying to do the right thing, trying to transmit the right message, trying to help out and motivate people. Um, yeah, that something for me is uh, that just as an example, there was a um, a video that they put out there about a a athletes and pregnancy and athletes and motherhood. And it was super, super inspiring because just personally, that's something that I always, I'm always very insecure about. And that video is super, ins that really inspired me. So it's not really just about, yeah, I just feel like this, the brand is not, trying to look good they're actually trying to do good things and this is i think a huge 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 difference from a lot of other brands that i've worked with before that makes a lot of sense and moving on from that how important do you think it is for dancers to build up their social media not only within the dance community but also for the chance of gaining any sort of sponsorship from larger corporations I think um, social media goes hand in hand with your actual success. Um, it is a free tool that is given to us to market ourselves. It's a free tool to market our um, our brand. And Beagle Jilu is a brand. Jilu is the person. <laughs> so what I'm putting out there is the brand Beagle Jilu. And social media is giving me a platform for free to actually promote myself. So um, that's why I think taking care of your social media, it depends on what your goals are, but if you want to be a pro professional athlete, it is a really, really important tool. So um, yeah, at the end, it really depends on what people remember. And there's, when it comes to titles there are so many titles especially in the breaking world that there are so many champs and so many high level dancers but what do we really really remember from them and this what we really remember our message that we want to bring out into the world that is where we can use social media to transmit that message so this is why i think social media is actually giving us a chance to show more than just the athlete itself and um, it's, it's everybody's decision what you actually want to share with the world. And if you just want to be the athlete that is performing and collecting medals, then that's cool. And you can share that on social media as well. But if there's more behind your message and if you want to share something that, um, that you care about, then social media is, yeah, I think a, a great platform for that. And when you think about your messages and your vision for yourself, how do you leverage your own social media to spread the messages that you want to share? Mm, I try to always have a very positive approach to my social media. Uh, I try to always, um, I try not to be too wild on it. I try not to be like, okay, I'm taking care. Uh, I'm speaking up against this problem and that problem and this problem and this problem and that problem. In general, for me, 
I, when it comes to problems of society, I speak up against racism and sexism. Um, those are the, the things that I want to concentrate on because I think as, if as, as an advocate or as somebody who speaks up, if you speak up about everything, then your message kind of gets lost. So I personally like to focus on these two subjects and if there's something that resonates with it and or is a cross subject in a way, then I think it's still, it can still be on my platform. But generally I try to focus on these two things because I think if you want to change something in the world, you actually have to like focus on what you want to change and figure out how you want to change it. And uh, then, yeah, speak up about it. But then, yes, I want to, I want to be, um, I do want to speak up about things that the world cares about at the moment. Um, but at the same time, I do try to keep a positive approach to it. So I am not sharing uh, war pictures. I'm not sharing um, violence. Even if I'm against the violence, I would share more a positive approach to how to change it how to not be violent instead of sharing what is happening. So um, yeah, my approach is not to try to focus on the negative, but to focus how to transform the negative into, a pos into the positive. So when it is about, when we talk about current subjects as a war, then for me, it is not about what is happening because I think there's a lot of a lot of other platforms where you can find that out. And I'm not a journalist, so I don't think it's my, my task to share information. My task would more be, okay, what are the sources where we can help? What are the, um, the attitudes that we can have towards what is happening? So I, I don't think that it's, it's good for me to share information where I don't even know if it's true or not. So I'd rather go for like, how can we make it better now? How can we help the situation now? And a lot of people will listen to this and they'll hear what you've said and they'll think, that makes a lot of sense. I don't understand why I'm focusing on the negatives all the time. I'm just going to focus on what I can do to help and my messages and I'm probably going to have a better time on social media. And you are active on your social media. We see you posting from, you know, your travels. We see you posting the events that you're at, but you're also posting about your workouts as well so when you think about your weekly training what does your weekly training look like how much of it is a balance between the dancing that you do and then your workouts and everything else so if i if i don't have competitions then i would usually train six times breaking a week um that would be monday to friday i would do a session from for four hours usually from 10 to 2 or from 12 to 4 I would train in that time breaking breaking which is everything that has to do with the uh, footwork freezes everything that we can figure out has to do with breaking um in the weekends I would do a live session where I usually just turn on music and I don't really focus on getting better but just doing what I like to do in that moment and having fun about breaking uh then normally I would do Mondays and Fridays, uh, one and a half hour session of workouts and athletic training with my coach. Shout out to Fatima in this case. Um, and she usually gives me a lot of exercises that have to do with core stability, getting stronger in general. Um, on Wednesdays, I usually went to a gym where I train my tricks and flips. Yeah. That's my week. Wow. So, so when you had to think about like the number of hours that you put into your training each week, how, how many hours would you say that you're training each week on everything? I did calculate it last time and it was 26 to 30 hours. So that's like a full-time job. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am in the really good position of being a full-time athlete now, and I really do want to take advantage of that. 